God Warcraft was an interesting time. Blizzard didn't quite have the hang of the whole balancing thing yet. Some items in the game were incredibly powerful, despite its item level being mid-50s. A lot of the best items in classic World of Warcraft were not best simply for a simple boost in stats, but due to their utility having way more of an impact than a slight increase in the base stats. Here are five of the most overpowered items in classic World of Warcraft. Goblin Rocket Helmet An engineer only item, this item dominated the PvP scene. It was seriously overpowered. Using this helmet, you would charge into your target and incapacitate them for 10 seconds after impact. During this time, you could heal, let your energy tick, go into stealth, bandage, or do anything you can think of within those 10 seconds. When you hit your enemy, your character would be knocked down for about half a second, but this was nothing compared to the 10 seconds of free time this would give you in PvP. I remember using this as a rogue in Classic while I was doing a Gearless Worn Dagger spec. This amazing helmet would be part of my strategy. Upon using the Goblin Rocket Helmet, I could pause the fight, bandage, let my energy get back to 100, re-stealth, and use Cheap Shot, all before the target recovers from the stun. It was seriously broken, but it wasn't just rogues that would benefit from this helmet. In fact, this is an essential PvP item for all specs, and is one of the biggest reasons why people spec into engineering in classic World of Warcraft. You just get so many great utility items, such as the grenades that stun a target for 3 seconds, you get trinkets that reflect spells back to the caster, it's just a ton of great items for PvPers. Hand of Justice. My god. Blackrock Depths was ground zero for ninja looting. The amount of insane gear that dropped from this was way beyond the mid-level 50 requirement. One of the overall best-in-slot trinkets for melee DPS dropped from a mid-level 50 five-man dungeon. So what made this so good? For one, the attack power is a key stat for melee, but what makes the Hand of Justice amazing is the 2% chance to gain an extra swing on attack. This was incredible. Not only does it have an, a chance of an extra swing, and with an extra swing you get a chance to have an extra critical strike. So this is way better than having plus critical strike. But you could also proc poisons and enchants on the extra swing. In addition to this, the proc can proc off itself due to it having no internal cooldown. Meaning, you could strike a target, get the 2% extra swing chance, and get the same trinket to proc off itself. This in combination with Sword Specialization, which had a 5% chance of granting an extra swing, and your DPS would skyrocket, giving your base attacks a 7% chance to double attack. Keep in mind, this is a level 53 trinket, so you could get this early and it would last you until AQ40 pretty much. It was, in actuality, best in slot until Nuxramus. I kid you not. For comparison's sake, compare this to the equivalent melee trinket that you get before entering a raid. A level 60 trinket called the Black Hand's Breath gives you only a 2% chance to get a critical strike. This is a much inferior stat line compared to gaining an extra swing. And despite that, it lacks the bonus attack power of Hand of Justice. What madman thought this would be an appropriate drop for Blackrock Devs? Dark Edge of Insanity. This two-handed axe dropped from the final boss in AQ40, Kafun. The amount of insane damage it could deal, plus the bonus stats, made it a top-tier two-handed weapon. However, what made this weapon shine was its use in PvP. The chance on hit proc caused your target to wander around aimlessly for three seconds. This essentially is a stun. You could do whatever you wanted to your target for three seconds, as the effect was not broken by damage. It is essentially a tidal charm built into an already great axe, as stun locking in PvP is best thing ever. Nightfall. People built specs around this weapon. It was that influential. This was a decent axe for a level 60 binom equip epic weapon. However, the chance on hit proc is what was most sought after. The amazing proc increased magical damage taken to the target by a giant 15%, meaning all of your spellcasters in your raid are now doing an extra 15% damage onto the target, essentially making your character a support class. Nightfall was usually given to hybrid melee classes to justify their lower DPS belonging to a raid. An enhancement shaman couldn't compete with fury warriors or 
more rogues. But if they could increase magical damage done to the target by 15% and overall contribute to the raid, it could make sense bringing them along and you could actually get an invite into a raid. However, the best class suited for equipping Nightfall was Hunters, as the spell Wing Clip had no cooldown and could be spammed as rank 1 for as long as you want. You would never run out of mana and you could just spam it over and over again. Each cast of wing clip had a chance of applying the proc from the nightfall weapon. How ironic that a ranged DPS class has a melee DPS spec using this weapon. Iron Foe. My god this weapon is fun. The chance and hit effect would let your character gain not one, but two extra swings. Essentially swinging three times in one hit. You may be under the assumption that such an amazing proc would be quite rare, but in fact, it was super common to happen. The proc chance was about 20% and had no internal cooldown, meaning that 1 in 5 swings would give you an extra 2 attacks, and it of course procced off itself often. Seeing 5 attacks done from one swing was a regular occurrence. This in combination with Swift Hand of Justice to gain the extra 2% chance of an extra swing and a crusader enchant and you were doing some insane DPS. I was using this as a fury warrior and frequently I was seeing seemingly endless numbers fly around my screen. It was amazing. You may think such an incredible item would drop from at least AQ40, maybe Blackwing Lair at a push, but no. It dropped from the last boss in Blackrock Depths, a mid level 50 dungeon. What? I wasn't joking when I said Blackrock Depths had some insane loot. However, this required some grinding. The chance of this dropping was only 4% from the last boss. So if your group disbanded before then, you would have no chance of getting this. This meant you had to run Blackrock Depths on average at least 25 times to get a chance to roll on it. I was fortunate enough to get this on my warrior on my first run in the dungeon. You can imagine how happy I was. The proc also had a weird side effect. Your character would only speak Dwarven for 10 seconds, meaning you couldn't communicate with your party for a while after it proc'd. It was pretty weird, but really, really cool. I mean, good luck trying to get this. Any class would try and roll on this if it dropped, as Blackrock Depths was so common to see people ninja looting on things. If a class could equip this, by god, they will try and roll on this because it is such a fun and such a powerful item that you can get early on, before you even hit level 60. So yeah guys, these are some of the most overpowered items in Classic World of Warcraft. Classic World of Warcraft was a time where there was many strange and interesting items that really changed the game. As I said, with the Nightfall Axe, there were specs built around that weapon. That is how crazy and influential that weapon was. In addition, engineering had a bunch of really, really overpowered items that could basically just change the tide of a PvP battle. It was really, really good. There was so much utility that engineers had in PvP. If you wanted to be any sort of serious PvPer, you would have to take engineering. There really wasn't an alternative. But I think items having so much power and having so much utility is part of what makes World of Warcraft Classic memorable. When I got Iron Foe, I was so happy. It was such a unique experience hitting three times in one hit. It was so cool. Well, anyway, guys, if you like this video, please like down below and subscribe to the channel for more. This is Vaulty signing out.